Over the next five years, the next term of the EU institutions, we can expect that climate and environment will become ever bigger as uh, policy and political issues. That's because the physical impact of climate change is going to be felt a lot more in Europe. The latest estimates on the hard science uh, from the Copernicus Institute and also the European Environmental Agency are that Europe is warming at double the global average. Uh, and that will mean major climate events, uh, wildfires, floods, but also droughts, um, climate impacts that citizens will feel and businesses uh, will, will uh, experience um, as well. That's going to mean increasing costs from climate and no doubt then demand for more climate adaptation policies at EU level. I, I can imagine, for example, um, some kind of demand for uh, disaster relief and solidarity between member states that are suffering from climate impacts. It also means a different framing um, is likely to come for the climate policies that have been put in place already since 2019. There's been some pushback on those with um, complaints about the cost of implementing uh, climate mitigation policies, those that are designed to reduce emissions from Europe, particularly from production in Europe. But adaptation is likely to come to the fore now uh, because of the cost to the public purse as well as to businesses and individual citizens uh, from those, those climate impacts. We can also expect that climate policy will extend beyond uh, the uh, issues of, of emissions so far addressed by the Fit for 55 package and a range of other legislation and other policies into areas that have so far actually been little touched. For example, the emissions from agriculture, uh, which haven't been covered by the EU's carbon pricing yet. Um, and also uh, a number of circular economy uh, uh, issues and opportunities for European business. Um, already the EU has moved into sustainable products and started setting standards there, also uh, in the area of waste and waste management. These are things that really concern European cities and there's an increasing understanding that waste can also be a resource. Uh, so we can expect an implementation phase um, on the circular economy that starts to bring in uh, more business uh, interests as well as um, the, the question of, of how to manage the end of life in terms of waste, also looking at the start of life in terms of eco-design um, and sustainable products. I expect that there will be a lot of debate about what the EU should focus its budget on because the multi-annual financial framework will come to an end and a new one will start in 2028. At the moment, the EU still spends uh, a, a, the largest proportion of its budget, about three quarters of it, on uh, agriculture and on cohesion policy. Those policies have, to some extent, had some green objectives written into them, but they could move much further to support uh, the climate uh, objectives of the EU, particularly to support a social deal, uh, to help with the, the social costs of uh, the, the transition, for which there are not really very many funds at EU level yet, as well as the issue of agriculture and supporting rural populations and farmers through the transition and offering different kinds of income streams, also from things like renewable energy cited on, on farmland. Um, we can also expect that the climate agenda will move more into the direction of the external impact, how it will affect the EU's relationships with other countries. The EU is reducing the emissions um, from production on EU territory, but of course there are very large embedded emissions in all of the products that we import into the European Union. Um, and as the uh, carbon border adjustment mechanism uh, is phased in, uh, the EU will be recalibrating its relationships with third countries and discussing the changes to trade patterns and to supply chains uh, that are resulting from that. So the international agenda, what you might call the, the global reach of the Green Deal, will also be an important policy area.